The Legend of Jimmy Spoon by Christiana Gregory, Chapter 22, Grizzly. Washakis hunters had shot a great number of moose, elk, and deer in preparation for the coming fall. Women worked into the night, drying meat and tanning hides until everything could be packed for travel. Then they were up before dawn with the children to gather berries. Jimmy loved working between Old Mother and Hanabi, filling baskets with raspberries and service berries. They would spread black they would spread blankets beneath the branches and shake the trees as hard as they could. The children had fun beating sticks against the branches. Berries bounced and rolled in great numbers. By the day's end, their arms were scratched raw from thorns, and Jimmy's lips were stained red from the delicious juice. He no longer cared that the boys teased him about doing squaws work. If he ignored them, they hissed less. One afternoon, when Jimmy and Old Mother were in a canyon shaded by high cliffs, a horrible scream pierced the air. Several children and women with cradle boards came running toward them from the willows. A bear has killed my girl, cried one woman. Jimmy's heart squeezed tight. The woman was Nahini, was Nahani's mother. He swung onto Pinto Bean, who grazed nearby, then raced through the brush up the canyon. In a clearing, he saw the bear. It was hunched over something red. Yeah! Jimmy screamed, jumping down. He picked up a rock and threw it. Another, then another. Yeah! He kept screaming. The bear lifted its head, annoyed at the interruption. When it saw Jimmy, it stood on its hind legs and roared. It was as tall as a teepee, and it rocked back and forth, swiping its paws in the air. Jimmy could see its long, curved claws. Grizzly, it was the only animal the Indians feared. Jimmy continued to pelt the great bear with stones, all the while screaming as loud as he could. Suddenly the bear turned, dropped up to its four legs, and ambled across the stream. Jimmy hurried to Nahani. She lay face down, not moving. Her dress was soaked with blood. A beaded sleeve was torn away. Nahani? He was afraid to touch her. He didn't want to find out if she was dead. But when he saw her hand twitch in the sand, he carefully rolled her onto her back. Her eyes were closed, but he could hear her breathing. She was alive. Quickly, he searched for her wound and saw the hole in her side, blood seeping out. He ripped off his shirt and held it against her. Help, he yelled. Somebody help us. But no one came. Jimmy struggled to lift her onto his horse. She was heavy, and he was afraid of hurting her more. He lay her on her stomach with her feet toward the tail, then began running with one arm holding her, with one arm holding her on, and his other hand pressing his bunched shirt against the wound. Pinto Bean trotted gently, as if she understood the importance of their mission. As they rode out of the canyon, Nahani tried to lift her head. Mother, she began crying. Where's my mother? Jimmy didn't want to tell her everyone had run off. She's safe, he said. When they approached camp, they were met with cheers. Nahani's mother rushed up, weeping for joy. That night, Nahani's parents came to Washaki's teepee. After Washaki lit his pipe and prayed to the Great Spirit, the father spoke. Dawi is a brave boy, a good boy. He saved our daughter's life. What can we give him for this? Washaki nodded towards Jimmy. It was his turn to speak. I have one question, Jimmy said to the mother. Why did you run away and leave Nahani like that? The mother sat between Hanabi and old mother. She had the same soft face and beauty of her daughter, her eyes filled with tears. I watched the bear knock Nahani down and bite her side. I couldn't stop such a big bear. It would have killed me also. Then two would be dead, the father nodded. Many get killed by a bear when they try to rescue someone, he said. It is best to run while the bear eats the one. Jimmy was horrified. That's not how I would do things. If I ever see a bear attack someone, I will kill it, even if it means me getting eaten too. With Shockey and Old Mother exchanged small smiles. You are a hero, Old Mother said proudly. Everybody in the tribe will think of you as, a brave, as the brave one from now on. When you are a man, you will be one of the greatest chiefs our people has ever had. You will bring peace to the Shoshone. Washaki began cleaning his pipe. Nahani's parents stood. The mother looked tenderly at Jimmy. Nahani will be your wife when you grow older, she said. I do not want a wife, Jimmy said, blushing. He liked to show off for Nahani, but he didn't think it meant he should marry her. Then, remembering his manners and his responsibilities as a hero, he added, Thank you anyway. You will change your mind someday, the mother said. And that is the end of chapter 22.